Good morning and welcome on back to the channel, everybody. Today, we are going fishing. Come here, girls. Oh, easy, easy there, Puff. Taking it out of the straight basket. Leftover oats, grapes, apples, bell peppers. Bell peppers are really good for their immune system, by the way. Sandwich bread ends that Emmy doesn't like to eat. Uh, leftover broccoli and looks like some, I don't know, random stuff in there, but they like it. We're gonna go try to conquer some winter bass today, y'all. You know, my last trip out, fish for smallmouth really deep, very tough conditions. Uh, we're gonna go after some largemouth today. I'm gonna try to fish riprap, shallow riprap, which is a great, great technique uh, that is relevant all over the place. Any type of shoreline rock, you know, it, it typically holds some heat during uh, the most sunny winter days. So the bass will kind of scoot up there, uh, bait fish will scoot up there, get a little heat uh, mid to late day. You know, the mornings are really cold. This is a, a big public lake around the, the Metroplex area where I live. Uh, we've had just brutal winds, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds the last couple days. It should be calm now, sun's coming out, it's gonna be decent conditions. So we're gonna go try to catch some fish on that riprap. But we're gonna keep some other things in the arsenal ready to go because bass fishing is bass fishing and they never read the rule book. So let's get it. Temp is 44.6. And over there is just a massive long stretch of riprap. Okay, under the bridge we go. Oh, definitely some fish sitting there under the bridge. Interesting. Gonna have some bridge noise here, apologize. This is the Grande Clutch. Gonna get a little more distance on our cast with it. Looks like we got some brush out here though. We might snag this thing up very much fast. Yep, yep, we sure did. May have to switch up my tactic here if I keep getting snagged, but this stuff right here looks really nice. Wow, okay. This is staying out of the rocks much better. I can feel I'm bumping it, but I'm not getting hung in it. Can't get bit, y'all. It's extremely loud right here, I apologize. But this looks like a good little pinch point. There's shad that are moving through under this bridge. The, all these bridges out here, the shad move through. And I'm seeing these good looking size bass that are following these shad they're just on the move um, you know I tied on a, an underspin a deep underspin try to get down there I haven't got bit I went down to the Ned rig y'all went down to the rattle and Ned fished that down, that down there fished it on the drop off can't get bit so I'm gonna leave this area I'm gonna abandon the riprap thing I just gotta get I gotta get out of it for a second and see if there's there's any hope anywhere else it is an absolute grind, but I'm not giving up. So let's pull this trolling motor up. Let's get on the Merc and let's go find some daggone bass. Come on, man. Come on. Hooked up. Shallow, shallow rock. That's a cold one. Barely hooked. On the 7 8 ounce. Nice, healthy fish right there. Cold lips. All 
right, y'all, we're gonna let that one go. <laughs> I hope it's not the only one I catch today. Go back into the shallows, warm up, get those red lips nice and ready to get another crawfish. First bite, and it's like one o'clock. It's warmed up a little bit, which is good. You know, I always say like midday, later in the day is better in the winter, obviously, because the water's gonna warm up. I've come into an area, I fished all like deep, deep areas or close to deep water with riprap. I came in to an area that's got shallower rock. Deepest around here is like 15, 20 foot. Um, and there's no shad less than 20 feet of water that I've seen. So they're gonna be feeding on bluegill, crawfish in this area, and that, and that fish was literally in like two feet of water. Good sign, we're gonna keep cranking in here. I'm gonna definitely throw a jig around, slow my roll, and uh, try to pick up some bites. Come on, you old big face. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I had him. I don't know how he came off, but I had him. He was in the dirt. I saw his tail. He wasn't, he wasn't a giant, but dang. Oh, dang. You want to get every single one you can when it's like this. He hit it and then just sat there, and I had to check him. And when I lift it up, he bit it again. So he could have been in the process of kind of spitting it out. I love to fish lakes with grass in the winter because of that reason. The grass warms up just like rocks will. This lake is not a grass lake. It just has some shoreline grass with a very, very few patches that are like that. The vegetation will warm up and uh, it'll attract those bass to sit next to it like a warm blanket. <laughs> Jerk bait and slid off. Dang. It's a little slow on the GoPro. God, the thing just loaded up. Feel the head shakes. Head gummit, man. Got my drag set and everything. That was a toad. One thing on this, this new GoPro, you have to turn it on. Let it sit for like 30 seconds before you start recording or it'll get like really bad audio pops. I noticed that when I was deer hunting, so not not good on the quick capture for bass fishing. Doesn't matter. I didn't catch them anyways, but God, that thing was pulling. All right, I've had three bites on three different baits. Two of them have come off. And the, uh, the one I landed was barely hooked. So, needless to say, I don't think the bite is very strong. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I wanted to make an entire video for y'all about fishing that riprap because there's a ton of lakes that have it um, and a ton of side waterways that have it as well and it's a good winter technique. It was just tough. And that's why I'm out here today. I want to see why or how the pond is fishing. It's, it's going to be colder at night out here. Uh, the water temperature is going to be colder, but it might be a little bit warmer during the day. And this is more of a, a likely scenario that anyone can go and fish. You know, this is basically pond fishing, bank fishing in the wintertime. I grew up doing this and I love the fact that this pond out here has shoreline vegetation. That's going to hold a little bit of heat. Uh, it gives the bluegill and things something to hide in. I will tell you guys, any, any kind of body of water that has grass in it can have year-round shallow water fishing. Let's just get down to the water and start fishing where we got two hours of daylight, plenty of time to get some bass in the warmest part of the day. And yes, I do realize I have a bandana on my head. I've never really worn one. Um, on this channel besides that one time I was, I was deer hunting out here it's it's literally to keep the hair 
under control during windy conditions. Okay, it's a, it's a hair compensator. I need to cut it, it's about time. I was trying to go for Casey off Yellowstone, uh, make the wife go wild, but uh, it's beyond that point now. Um, she says it's unattractive, so. That's rough right there, y'all. Look at that. Wow, there's just tracks beyond belief. Oh, there's a lot of cows down there. There's some ducks getting up off the water. Oh man, there's cormorants in here. That is not good. I've never seen them in here. Guys need to get the heck out of here. Just so you guys know, there's not much you can do about it because these birds protected, but this, this one flying in, that's a cormorant. They're feder federally protected and they eat their weight in fish like every day. It's absolutely terrible to have in a pond like this and that's very disappointing to see you in here, you sucker. If they were legal to shoot, I'd blast every single one of them that was on this lease, but they're not. So we're just gonna have to uh, leave them be. Grab our money bag. We've also got another box full of goodies. Gotta get past old Bertha here. Excuse me. Coming to get my dangle on. So what am I gonna start out with? Get the heck out of here, Comorants. Go away, never come back. Folks, it is hard to beat a half ounce spinnerbait anywhere in the country winter through early spring. Same thing with this right here. This isn't a 3 8 ounce, but this is the clickbait. Uh, I'm going to show you guys something here on this in a second. Uh, some feedback that we've gotten some people from people, and I've played around with this bait a lot. Um, so I know how to tune this. So we'll get into that here in a second. Uh, there are bluegill in here. And you just want to slow this bait down in the winter. So that's why I like to go with the three eights. And that's pretty decent there. I just want to be able to, to roll it slowly through here. That's pretty good. Well, I'm going to show you guys something right now. So this is actually a uh, some feedback that we've gotten from people that this bait rides up. And what happens, you have to tune this like a spinner bait uh, if you want to maintain that, that neutral uh, depth. What happens here, if you um, get snagged at a log or something like that, or, you know, boat flip a fish, this wire will bend forward. And what that does is changes this blade angle and it'll make it lift. You can bend this backwards and you can get it to uh, go a little bit deeper or stay neutral, whatever you want. Uh, but if you're fishing shallow grass, like I am right here, I uh, just bent that out a little bit and it's, it's gonna add a little lift and you can use that to slow your bait down. So the more lift it has, the slower you can go without it hitting the bottom. And with this water being really cold, I, I need to do that. So I want to add just a little bit of lift. And when you're fishing a vibrating jig and around vegetation like this, if you feel it start to sock up, like get wrapped around something, just give it a quick pop like that. And it'll usually clear it off and you can continue fishing the bait. Well, I just noticed something where I'm standing. This is a very bad sign. There's bluegill just on the bank right here. And I'm, I'm guessing that it got so cold um, that they could barely move. There's one next to the water. I'm just deducing this. It looks like they've been stabbed. This is so stupid. See, this is the cormorant poop right here. And you can see the bluegill sitting right next to it. This is what these bass are feeding on. This is the forage. And you can see, like, they've just discarded them. Like, they just chomp, chomp, chomp. There's another area with some poop. They just chomp everything. They're just fish massacres. That's what we're dealing with there, folks. It really sucks.
there's a cold big bass. Oh, at least you're fat. Ah. Tasty cakes. Spinnerbait fish. Look at that hook just falling right out. That fish is cold, 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 y'all. So there we go. That's like a three and a half pounder. Put that fish in the water. Give you a little more water there, bud. Shake it off, shake it off. You got it. Its mouth is on a root right there. It'll get its bearings here in a second. There we go. Other way, other way. Turn back around. Yeah, let me help you. A little deeper right there. Sayonara, Sally. Yeah, I know. You want to warm up. You want to get in that warm water. There she goes. Let me give you the replay. I'm running out of GoPro batteries. I'm having to conserve. Got in a little green stuff over here. Most of it's dead, so I can uh, I can run the spinner bait through the little thicker grass. But I I got a bump and saw a boil, so I was rolling it through right here, just keeping my rod tip high. And I got a like a just a slight bump, and I could see a boil, and I threw back in there again, and that fish grabbed it ever so slightly. Super subtle light bite, but I can already tell you the bites bites are going to be similar <laughs> to what they were on the lake just few and far between the wood is another thing that holds heat in the winter we're gonna get back in there on that wood over there we're gonna do some flipping <sighs> behind the scenes action i am trying like crazy to do something to help you guys winter time techniques the stuff i'm talking about is not bs it's just Dude, it's tough. It is really tough right now. This early part of the year is just, it's not for the faint of heart. It's where you grind, you earn your, you earn your points up. And then spring when it turns on, you're already dialed, you're catching mondos. It's like pregame, but there's some suffrage to be had. Lake versus pond, you know, I could break it. The advantage of the pond is you can break it down a lot faster. So you can identify what's going on a lot faster because you have less water. In lakes, you got, you know, 40 feet of water out there. They could be on deep creek channels. Um, there's a lot of different options. And here, there's not as many options. So I'm going to walk my, my happy little butt over there, and I'm going to attempt to get me a wintertime flipping bass. Dedication to the bug right now. Uh, vegetation like this makes it hard to fish uh, jigs a lot of times the heads get caught in the grass sometimes you have to this is the method you have to go with come on right on the tree please don't get hung in that thing oh there he is right there he's got it Right at the base of the tree. Oh my gosh, he came off. Ah, he ran out. He ran out and he caught up to my slack. Dad, come in, man. Oh, lordy, lordy. This could be why this fishing is just cancer right now. Look at that. Look at these little guys. Just a lot of bluegill. Even the, this big one right here died. That's not good. Probably lost some small bass as well. <sighs> Bummer cakes. Take it as a sign from God that when the fish are just dead on the shoreline, probably a good idea to just turn around. You know, in the last 24, 48 hours, 36 hours, we'll say, I have fished hard i have gone hard i've i fished pretty much all day on a lake did everything i knew to do from deep water to shallow water 
and I come out here expecting it to be a little bit better and I get two bites. I mean, it's, it's right on par uh, with the lake fishing, but over here, the water's not as deep and the fish, I guess, because it was so cold, uh, died. Um, <laughs> it's never good. Dove, hot action. <laughs> I think it's still winter dove season. Maybe not. Probably not. Wouldn't be legal. Anyways, I think that's why the comorants were here is because there were dead bluegill and probably some small bass all over the bank and they just scooped them up. But today is just a, a display of heart, the harsh reality of winter bass fishing. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I wanted to bring you guys some awesome winter fishing tips. I, I feel like I gave you guys some decent stuff here today, but it's not backed up with any fish catches, you know, and, um, these are the type of videos where I, I debate like not even putting them out, but uh, I also want to show the reality of it. So I'm posting it. Um, I also want to end today's program on another sad note. Um, it was brought to my attention uh, the other day that a, a, a fishing mentor of mine, when I started getting into pro fishing and guiding, uh, died. Um, he passed away. His name was Mark Pack, and he was one of the founders at Lake Fork Trophy Lures and one of the best guides at, at Lake Fork. And really, when I got out there and started fishing, he, he was one of the guides that, that helped me and showed me the general patterns, helped me break down the lake and showed me uh, areas of the lake and uh, lures to depend on to catch fish and, and really jig fishing. He, he amplified uh, my jig fishing as a young angler and he, he was a he's a legendary um i'll just say angler period i was going to say legendary texas angler but he's a legendary angler period rest in peace brother um thank you for the help mark pack um and i know a lot of you guys in texas have have heard of him there's big shoes to fill for for losing a great angler like Mark Pack. So I just want to give a shout out to him. Many of you that, that are watching this video right now are dedicated hardcore anglers and are, are going to dedicate your craft um, to be like Mark Pack someday. So uh, that is a good thing. That is a good note that we will end on about this is um, making all these videos throughout the years um, and just watching the sport grow as much as it has. Uh, I'm just watching some amazing young anglers come up and I know some of y'all are watching right now. So keep doing what you're doing. Don't di get discouraged by harsh winter fishing like I am right now. Take this time to, to hone your craft. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you as always for tuning in. I'm going to look forward to this spring. I got a feeder I'm going to put out here and get some of these bluegill fattened up and hopefully get some, some monster bass going in here. But, uh, we're going to wait for it to warm up a little bit before we give it another dangle out here. Y'all, I'm signing off for today. God bless you. I'll see you soon.